right, uh, I guess to start things off, you guys have a very unique sound. Uh, would you attribute that to, as well as far as heavy metal goes anyway, what would you say are your basic influences? Um, we, uh, I would say that uh, our major influences would be bands like Sabbath and Priest and uh, Motorhead. I would say those three bands are our major influences. Like when we come home at night and, uh, you know, throw something on the stereo, it's usually those three bands, you know. And when we write Exciter material, we I guess we dig into our influences a lot, and we get the speed from Motorhead and the heaviness, the crunch from Sabbath. And, you know, we like Priest also, but, like, we don't, you know, listen to a Sabbath song and rip it off. Um, like you said, our, our sound is very unique, but uh, I guess we just follow those, those influences. How about uh, indie labels? Have you had any success or trouble as far as labels go with Megaforce or Music for Nations? Um, I would say, as far as indie labels go, I would say we had uh, a lot of trouble really with our first indie label, which was Shrapnel. Like, we didn't have that much trouble, but I mean, there, there wasn't very much promotion, you know. And uh, so our first album, as a result, only sold about 30,000 in a year. And that's, that's basically on no promotion at all. Now, uh, companies like Megaforce and Music for Nations, um, we're not really having trouble, you know, it's just that they're not a, a major label, so they don't have the cash to go out and say, here's 20 grand for a uh, promo for your next album, here's 50 grand to do it in the Bahamas, you know, stuff like that. It, it's kind of, we all got to work together, and uh, as a result, we're, this time around, we're selling a hell of a lot more albums on our second album than we were on our first one. But, um, you know, a, an indie label, in a lot of ways, is better than a major label because you got better insight, you know, you, you can talk to your uh, record company president face-to-face, -face. you know what's going on, uh, you got a lot more say, like, when we, we want to record, we say where we want to record, we want to do it this way, like, there's no one that knows Exciter like Exciter, and the same goes for any band, but sometimes... You know, you can get hooked up with a, like a super major label and they put like uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars behind you, but then you got a big fat, you know, guy behind his desk designing, you know, your album cover and uh, your, you know, your tours and your stage show and your t-shirts and, you know, what the hell does he know about you? Mm -hmm. uh, any chance on Heavy Metal Maniacs being released in Canada? Uh, we're trying to do that right now. We're trying to convince Shrapnel Records to, you know, to release it in Canada and on Music for Nations because that album, uh, the underground metal world picked it up, and uh, you know, it won a lot of polls and different magazines in Europe and stuff, and a lot of people really liked that album. And we feel that if we can get that album released, you know, in Canada and in, in Europe and in England, we might sell a lot more. Um, the Hell on Earth tour in England with right. uh, Metallica and the Rods, that sort of came apart at the seams at the last minute. What happened with that? Okay, what happened was um, in England, as everyone knows, the kids just don't have any money, you know. And uh, what happened was bands like St uh, Status Quo and White Snake and uh, Quiet Riot and all these bands were touring at the exact time that we were flown over, you know. And when we got there, um, everything was cool and then the kids just you know weren't buying the tickets so once one promoter pulls out of you know the tour everyone else kind of falls in behind and pulls out so the whole tour fell through and you know bands like Man of War and Quiet Riot were playing in 3,000 seat auditoriums to like 100, 150 people and you know promoters were losing their ass so here comes the Hell on Earth tour with three bands you know from America and, uh, you know, the promoters just didn't want to go for it because, like, there would have, we know there would have been a big walk-up, you know, at the night of the gigs, but um, it, it would have been, a, you know, a huge money loss as a result. So they decided to cancel it maybe until a later date, you know? Any plans on going back to the UK or Europe to do any touring? Oh, yeah, we got, like, we got about seven offers from Europe while we were in England. We spent three weeks in England and we got, you know, a lot of offers from Europe for festivals this summer and tours and uh, 
they wanted our management to get them through uh, budgets and stuff like that. And we're going to definitely go back there before the year is out. Like, uh, Music for Nations definitely wants us back. And they're going to put up the cash for tour support. Uh, when? Uh, we're not sure, but sometime this year. You get, okay, back on the local front, you haven't done that much touring that I've seen in like uh, Canada or the States. Any plans on doing much of that? Yeah, um, we haven't really went out. You know, the reason why a lot of people haven't really heard of Exciter in the past couple of years and then all of a sudden, bang, here we are, is because we refuse to do the club circuit. You know, we refuse to go out and do the grind one week at a time at these different little dinky bars because our strategy has always been different. We, we'd rather either go big or stay at home, you know? And so, as for touring, we've done, you know, three dates in the States so far, and that was in, in uh, Brooklyn, New York, and a, and a couple in New Jersey, and those dates went over great. We have a huge following, and these are in, like, big venues, and we were getting, like, 800 to 1,500 people in these venues. And around here, we just do, uh, you know, um, local stuff, like uh, we do the Spectrum in Montreal, and uh, we get like 800 people. And all we're trying to do right now is trying to get, you know, Bonsai and Polygram to put up some cash so we could, you know, go across Canada. Because in August, our um, American record company is going to bring us down to, uh, to do some dates again in the States. Mm -hmm. um, as far as going back to touring, uh, uh, when you're uh, on the road and you're playing what would be an original form of metal music, definitely, uh, how are you received in some places with that? Are you, like, turned away because you're not, you know, your average cover band? But then again, you did say that you don't play. You don't refuse to do the club circuit. Right. Um, no, we've always been, like, uh, when we go out and uh, tour on the road, like when we went to the States and when we play around here in Montreal and stuff like that, we are received very well because it's, it's billed as exciter, you know, uh, major heavy metal spectacular or whatever, you know. So... It, it filters out the wimps in the top 40, you know, wimps can all go to the uh, the disco bars or whatever, go to the top 40 bars, but you know, we're out the pound metal, so, you know, we get, we're going to play in an auditorium, we're going to play to 1,500 screaming metalheads, you know, rather than go into a bar and play to 10 metalheads and 40 wimps screaming, you know, uh, Boy George and shit like that. <laughs> um. As far as, as uh, punk rockers go, I've heard you get a lot of them towards your show sometimes. How do you feel on that? Um, I, to tell you the truth, I haven't seen that many punkers at, at an Exciter show. Because in Toronto, there's countless hundreds that really enjoy your music. Yeah. Well, that's great. I say, you know, if they're into it, power to them. You know, they can come out and bang their heads on the wall. That's great. You know, if they like it, mm -hmm. great, great. You know, we have no beef against punkers for sure. Uh, do you eat a McDonald's? Pardon? Do you eat a McDonald's? Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, we eat a McDonald's. E you know, every every musician I think is into junk food. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, let's see, you'll be in Toronto this Friday. Yeah. What's going to happen like in the near future after Toronto? After Toronto, we're doing uh, Kitchener, uh, I think on the 26th of July, with uh, Raven and Anthrax. Oh, that's going to be in Kitchener. Yeah. Oh, we'll see that one. Yeah, that, sh that should be great. That should be a great show. We've done some shows with Anthrax. They opened for us a couple of times in the States, but we've never played with Raven before. Mm -hmm. uh, any uh, message you'd care to pass on to the headbanging public here? Uh, I would say Toronto. It's been a long time, and I think, you know, it is about time that Exciter has played Toronto. And uh, I hope we, you know, we all have a great night of metal on Friday night. All right then, Dan. Okay. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Okay, you too. For and sure. we look forward to seeing you this Friday. Yeah, we'll sure. see you Friday night for sure. All right then. Okay, Take we'll see it you. Easy. Bye. Bye bye.